Welcome to the first episode of Stump Pumps TV, where we bring you the latest news and events from the world of sport bike freestyle. Today we're going to call Polish professional stunt rider Rafał Pazerbeck, you might know him as Stunner13, and chat with him a bit before we head to Long Beach to see Nick Apex and Aaron Twight perform for the crowds at the International Motorcycle Show. So our very first guest for our very first episode is none other than Stunner13. I'm sure you've heard of him, he's personally one of my favorite riders to watch, and such a great guy, we're going to give him a call at his home in Poland and see what he's been up to. Hey, hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Stunt Bumps. It's Stunter 13 here. And yep, <laughs> here I am. It's great to hear from you. It's been a while since I saw you last summer here in California. So why don't you just catch us up and tell everyone what you've been up to? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I, I have uh, a lot of great things. A few months back, uh, I had a a uh, great show in Dubai. I, I've been something like uh, two weeks there and have a big show in Skydive Dubai. So that was a really great experience to visit this place because it's so, so beautiful. <laughs> and people didn't see too much of stunt riding in real life. So they, they, were, they really enjoyed uh, my riding. So that, that was a r really great uh, adventure for me. Yes, and um, I, I had also uh, one month before the Dubai, I had a, a great uh, three weeks of trip in France, Spain and Morocco. So that was also a great experience. Now after I'm back from Dubai, I'm preparing a new video from the European trip. So that, that will be something cool. So I know when you first started riding in Poland, stunt riding was not big at all. So how did you learn enough about the sport to actually get into it? Yes, yes. Uh, the stunt riding back in the day when I was started was really not not so popular here in Poland. Uh, so I look for some inspiration in uh, some videos uh, in internet from uh, American riders and French riders, but mostly from American riders. So uh, that was my biggest inspiration to try something else here in Poland. I used to ride. Uh, uh, bicycles before like uh, you know make some wheelies and some basic tricks and then I, 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 I didn't have too much money so to afford a good bike so my mom bo borrowed me few <laughs> few bucks to, uh, to buy uh, my first uh, Japanese bike uh, it, it was called uh, Suzuki RG80 and it was a really uh, little little bike with not too much power. So I mostly I concentrate on tricks like acrobatics. But that was also uh, very hard to to do on a light bike. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, my one of my first inspiration uh, from stand riding was like uh, back back in the day, the DGT from PBR, all the PBR team, DTA and all the old school riders from USA so um, back in the day acrobatics was very popular so I think that's why I go more I, I, I was going more on the acrobatics and also I <laughs> I didn't uh, even know that everyone is using the brake for a wheelie so <laughs> I all the time all the time make some power wheelies on RG and when I yeah, when I put too, uh, too much throttle, I just flip the bike. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> yeah, that was a lot of crashes so every day. So at what point did you realize you could actually become a professional rider? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my story was started when, when on that little, little RG80, I I was going for uh, my my first competition. Chris Tichmak Neil will, uh, will be here in Poland on a first competition in Poland in 2005, and Tony D and all, and also uh, the, those guys will be the judges for the competition. And also uh, the odd, the third judge was uh, Drew Stone. Clock socks, bagels, and locks. So yeah, and I watched a lot of uh, Urban Street Bike Warriors. <laughs> movies so I just want to go not for you know competing just to see uh, how everything looks there and man maybe meet uh, Teach and Tony D and Drew Stone and talk a little bit that was my uh, yeah, big inspiration and 
uh, that was my, really my goal to 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 see the the real riding from the American riders. Uh, so I just uh, registered as a competi competitor. I was competing uh, with all the big bikes <laughs> inside. <laughs> so so that was uh, really funny. Uh, at the beginning, uh, everybody was uh, laughing about me. Yeah, that you want to compete on the little bike, and also my Suzuki RG was not uh, working and looking good because it was like beat up <laughs> after two years of practicing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I I was just uh, concentrating uh, on, on my riding and just you know I just ha want to have a fun and have a better place to see the Tristan and Teach <laughs> killing it. After after my first run, I uh, Teach and Tony D say that yeah I'm really a great rider. They didn't see those acrobatics uh, on on a small bike, so that that was for them something something new. And so I I was really am amazed that uh, those guys really like my run. And uh, then after second run, I won the competition. <laughs> yeah, and af after that, I don't really remember too much because it was for me a really big shock to <laughs> to just you know go there just for fun i think that was my big big kickstart uh, to continue my riding and uh, and started to go more more professional i after i won this competition i bought a big bike cbr f3 600 and uh, and started to competing more and more i have something like uh, on the competition, fourth place, third place, and then going more and more into this, and yeah, just have fun and going more professional. So the final question is for fans who live in countries where stunt riding is not that big. What is your advice to them as a professional rider on how to get into the sport? Mm -hmm. So what, what they need to do, yeah, at, at the at the beginning, uh, they need to protect themselves. That's that's really important if somebody wants to. Uh, you know, riding all the time, need to have helmet, of course, back protections, knee protections, gloves, and everything because it's really important. And also, it's really important to find a good spot uh, that there is uh, no possibility to, you know, to have some cars or uh, people inside because it's really, it's really dangerous for somebody else. Uh, so, so that's I know. Sometimes it's it's really hard for me. It was also uh, hard to start it here in my town, my little town, uh, stand riding because people didn't know what they what they need to expect. Uh, they 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 just think that they just thought that I I just riding to kill myself. <laughs> and after and after uh, like one two years, I did a first show for my city so then people realize that I want to make more professional competing uh, practicing on a uh, parking lot without cars and people and now they are they enjoy it uh, but the other uh, if they really want to go professional uh, they need to change all the life because if they want to put it to the max they need to you know a little bit less <laughs> party and more concentrating on riding because uh, the co the concentration when you when you're riding it's really important and uh, sometimes if if somebody is too much party or dr drink smoking uh, they can have some bad accidents on on riding on, and yeah if everybody will be pushing hard themselves the the dream comes true not maybe in one year, in two years, in three years, but uh, in in some time, uh, everything can happen. So, yeah, <laughs> good luck for everyone. Big thanks to Rafal for being the first guest on our first show. We appreciate his time. Definitely look him up, stunner13.com. He's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Find him and follow him. You won't be disappointed. Now let's head down to Long Beach and see what Aaron Twight and Nick Apex are up to at the International Motorcycle Show. The International Motorcycle Show has been entertaining crowds with stunt riders for the past couple years. This year they did something a little bit different with the XDL Street Jam. I'm going to let Nick Apex and Aaron Twight tell you what it's all about. 
We are out here at uh, Long Beach, California for the IMS show and we are doing the XDL Street Jam, which is more than just a motorcycle stunt show. It's kind of like a, a sneak attack education of what we do at XDL and what our sport is all about. So the show kind of just goes through like a mock competition of the events that we would do at a normal event for XDL, the circle challenge, the wheelie race, and then like kind of a freestyle jam session. And we use that opportunity to introduce the tricks and introduce the format. And we've got Tice out here emceeing, so he's kind of explaining what we do and the evolution of our sport. So it's a nice way to have a show and educate the people at the same time. This whole deal is to kind of take this public that's seen stunt shows over the last, you know, well, I don't know now, since 2009, they've had some form of motorcycle freestyle show here, with the exception of last year, and not show them just standard issue freestyle riding, but try to explain to them through the tool of XDL how we turned this into a sport and how we're trying to ride competitively against one another. It's a really cool venture they've taken on, and I really hope it introduces, because you get thousands of people over the weekend, so hopefully that turns into people that become fans of XDL, because there's a lot of fans of freestyle here. Thanks so much for watching the first episode of Stump Bums TV. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment in the section below and tune in to StumpBums.com for daily news, videos, and how-to tutorials. If you have any news from around the world, definitely hit me up. I'd love to chat with you about it and maybe put you in the next episode. Until then, happy stunting.